What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3. Fucking camera angle. BioS3 Raw TV. Today, I'm well, let's explain what happened today. So, I'm still getting um, emails, comments, stuff like that about people sending me things going, This is my training split. Is this a good training split? Is this the right amount of times to train a muscle? Is this the right sets to do? Is this the right reps to do? And my rule of thumb is if it's working and you're growing and you're getting results, then yes, it's good to do. There is no magic routine, and I've said this over and over again, but there is a way to understand the variables, which I'm trying to give you guys as much information as I possibly can so you can learn how to do it on your own, you know, but I think some of you want me to basically take your programs and revamp them for you, and that's what I get paid to do. It takes me hours to revamp programs and diets and stuff like that. I don't have this stuff where I just punch something into a computer and it spits out a program and I send it. I sit down and do these things by hand, calculate with a calculator, the macros and stuff, it's not as easy as you think it is, because if it was that easy, then you'd figure out how to do it. But I want to go through a couple of things that can help you guys as far as building your routines. Now, this is the Titan Training Book, which is the fourth edition, Serious Growth 4. So Big Beyond Belief is Serious Growth 3. It's Optimum Training Systems. And there's a few things I'm going to read you out of here that may explain a little bit better on how to build your routines. Now, the first thing is training stress. Basically, weight training is a simple stress applied to the body. Okay, the body, the body responds to the stress by adapting to what you give it. So they want specific training regimens. Okay, training for, sp for maximum size would not yield maximum strength gains and vice versa. So what happens is each individual goal if you're training for explosive strength, you train for explosive strength, which would be some kind of athletic training, which you see a lot of the guys at my gym doing because they play football or basketball or wrestling or whatever, but they're not going to look like a bodybuilder. So if you see a bodybuilder training, they're going to get bigger and more fiber stimulation, but they're not going to be able to perform like an athlete. So you have to have your training dialed into what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, doing like, well, I do, you know, 35, uh, 35 reps and then a 100 rep set to put some blood into the muscle. What is that accomplishing? Is it breaking the muscle down? Is it making it bigger? What kind of training stress are you putting on it? Because the training stress more than likely should be 7 to 10 reps tops. And if you're training to failure, you should have failure at the 10th rep. So, or the seventh, anywhere from the 7th to the 10th rep. So different training stresses are going to depend on how your body adapts and whether or not you reach your goals. Training session length. The Bulgarians, which this is all this stuff came from Bulgaria long before Americans were even doing it. Bulgarian's research found that after 50 to 55 minutes of rigorous weight training, the body's natural blood testosterone level would decrease by up to 80%. Now what this means is, it doesn't automatically mean, well my testosterone is dropping, I'm not going to build, build muscle. What it means is you're overtraining your body going to a more of a catabolic state than you want to be. So if you're training for an hour and a half, you have passed that overtraining point, I don't care who you are, even if you're on drugs, you've passed that overtraining point, to where you would be getting your best growth. Now you may be still getting growth, but what if it could be better? That's the whole thing about this whole thing is what if? What if there's one thing you could do that would increase your results by 30% or 3% or 5%? Don't you want that other 5% for the effort that you're putting into it? Makes sense, right? Training session frequency. Now here's questions I get all the time. Back in the late 80s and early 90s, the Bulgarians were by far the best Olympic lifters on the planet. All right? That means that they, nobody was beating them. That means that they could come out of the locker room cold and do a 95% max clean and snatch or uh, snatch or clean and press without even warming up, okay? They train an extremely high level of intensity, never exceeding three reps on any exercise. Their training volume was very low, but this allowed them to perform four to six training sessions per day, okay? Um, training volume as it's increased is a greater toll than extracted from our recovery reserves. So... If you were doing five training sessions a day and you were doing 20 sets per training session, obviously you're not going to grow. But if you're doing four to five training sessions a day like the Bulgarians were, we're doing two reps per training session, your body's going to be able to recover. So it all depends on what the volume of your workout is, what the intensity. You can do high intensity as long as the volume is low. And I think that's where we're missing out a lot of the stuff. The volume is what really overtrains you, not the intensity. Because if you haven't trained intense enough, you can't do it for very long. Those guys that were doing three reps, are they can't do any more than what they're doing. That's three maximum reps that they were doing. 
as opposed to the guy who's doing 20 sets. The guy who's doing 20 sets is putting like maybe 60% effort in, although he feels like he's putting in 100% per set. That's not happening. He just can't be done. The body can't do it. Okay? Um, body part training frequency. Bulgarian research found that the muscle begins to atrophy about 72 hours after the last stress is received. So the longest you want to train weight to train the body part is 72 hours. So that means you should be trained again within that 72 hours. So that means you can possibly, depending on the volume and frequency, train a body part every day. And it should respond and grow. If you have your nutrition in check, your volume is in check, and you're able to rest so you can recover, you can train a body part every day. But if you're doing a 25 set chest work on a Monday, you're putting yourself in such a deficit, you may have to wait seven days because you've actually overtrained. And that's why the one body part per day per week is so popular. People push themselves so far that they're in such an overtraining deficit that it takes them a week to fully recover. So here, there's different stimuluses to the muscle, different ways to do it, but optimally, the least amount of training stress you have to put on with the maximum amount of intensity is the best way to get the muscle to grow. That's how it works. Putting forth all this kind of effort to get possibly less if just as much as the guy who does three sets doesn't make any sense. You're overworking. You're working hard but not smart. You're overtraining the muscle. So I hope this will help you guys. You guys can get this training manual. I got it from Amazon for like 20 bucks or something like that. It was no big deal. Now, giveaway time. We get another giveaway today. We have a brand new size large flag nor fail t-shirt. Here's Dana Lynn Bailey and Rob. And this is what we're going to do for giveaway. The first one to put in the comment section, down below, comment section, what was the name of my first competition and what year was it? Okay, so for example, and this is not it because this is the show I'm doing this year, the 2013 Sean Ray Classic. Okay, so you need to tell me the year and the name of the show. It's in my videos. I've talked about it before. It's actually in several of the videos. Some of you guys may even remember it. Some of you guys may not. And if, let's see, we'll bonus it a little bit. If you, uh, if you can guess, remember what age I was, and throw the age in there, I'll throw in a shaker bottle with it too, a brand new animal shaker bottle. So, first one to put it down right, wins the t-shirt, size large, so I don't know what size you guys wear, but it fits a little bit bigger than a size large, so it's not true to size, it's a little baggy fit. So, let's see who can get it the fastest. So I hope this explains a little bit about training frequency and building a program and what's ideal for you, what's ideal in general. And let's see who wins the shirt. BioCTraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. www.biocetraining.com is the blog and we're out.